the global warming threat gets real and a lot more personal. It is essentially coming home. As per studies, one tenth of the world's residential properties are under threat from global warming now. This is essentially shaking the foundation of the property sector at large, and this is globally. So, of course, to decode how we can curtail the impact of global warming for residential sectors, we are joined by two experts who are tracking the residential space and the realty sector very, very closely. We are joined by Samir Jasuja, the founder at Propequity. And we are joined by principal partner uh, Sundar Jagannathan at Square Yards. Thank you so much for your time. I'd like to begin by asking you, Samir, how can we contain the impact of global warming altogether for residential properties? Yeah. So uh, you know, uh, there is about thirty-nine percent of energy-related carbon dioxide emissions which are causing a lot of global warming, and that is due to real estate sector as such. Now uh, we have seen uh, in real estate that the commercial sector is got enough awareness thanks to the multinationals who are renting space out, and that awareness is causing developers to make green efficient buildings uh, because they lease them out to those tenants, and that's the tenant's minimum requirement. But unfortunately, that is not happening in the residential sector because developers don't. Continue to own those assets. They sell those assets or sell those developments and move on. And there are extra expenses that they have to incur, which they don't want to incur because that takes the cost of construction and cost of sales much higher. They are a little bit more sensitive towards that, and that is why there are compromises that we are that are being made. Or when a project is being marketed, energy efficient uh, uh, buildings are not being marketed like the way. Uh, other features like amenities, great clubhouse, or you know, uh, Italian marble is being marketed. Uh, unfortunately, in the residential sector, the building, if it is made IDBC certified, is not carrying that kind of an importance that uh, Italian marble or a big clubhouse is carrying. So that leads to wanting to create that awareness amongst consumers that they prefer. To buy a building that is a green building that is more energy uh, efficient, uh, and the developers have put some conscience, uh, consci uh, uh, have been conscientious about themselves and done things by choosing the right building materials and uh, providing the right things like rainwater harvesting, green infrastructure, preserving natural areas, providing solar panels. All that they are doing to make the building more efficient. So that awareness is required, and the consumer should be willing to pay a premium for that, and should be demanding that from the developer. Right. So one is awareness, like you said, but Sundar, climate change could wipe out nine percent value of the world's housing sector by two thousand fifty if measures are not taken as per studies. Now, what measures do developers need to take at large? One is, of course, consumer awareness. Yeah. What measures do developers, new projects, need to keep in mind so that this situation does not arise and is contained? Yeah, so it's a very good question. So if you break down that thirty-nine percent of real estate contribution to global emissions, it's like seventy percent. It's of it is coming from building operations, and thirty percent is coming from constructions, right? So and in terms of developments and real estate sector, we have two major categories. One is pre-construction or new construction projects, and one is existing buildings. So if you take, for example, the first scenario of existing buildings, how do we kind of uh kind of go against carbon emissions one of the first key focus for the real estate developers should be decarbonization right so from a decarbonization perspective some of the things that a real estate developer could do is around retrofitting these device uh, the devices that are already existing in these residential and commercial buildings with more energy efficient solutions like hvac system better lighting solutions which consume lesser energy than that is already there uh so this would involve obviously multiple stakeholders to come together to kind of fund this uh, retrofitting as a solution the second major alternative which uh, we are already seeing trends in the western world is kind of implementing tools and platforms that allow you to first measure what is the energy efficiency or carbon uh, emissions that are done from a building perspective so this would involve installation of sensors and modules uh, in the central level that allows you to track over an asset portfolio not just for developers but also for real estate investors to understand mm -hmm. how their energy efficiency can be tracked in a specific building and when it comes to new construction that's where we can kind of start from the 
uh, vision of being net zero from the construction perspective itself. So that would involve like adding up green materials, uh, finding alternatives to uh, concrete and steel, which is basically using alternate materials there, uh, ki kind of implementing the solar and uh, uh, other methods of energy efficiency from the mm -hmm. design of the building itself. So it has to be like a dual strategy. Uh, both the governments, right. developers have to be involved to kind mm -hmm. of get this mandated into the real estate practice. Right. Samir, do you agree? It has to be a dual effort, he says. No, I absolutely concur and agree uh, with the with our panelists. Uh, the government has to step in, like RERA, Real Estate Regulation Act, has been formed. Uh, and there are various checks and balances that it is putting into place. Similar kind of checks and balances have to be put in place with respect to making sure that the building is as green and as efficient as possible. And licenses should be only given to those buildings which prove that are IGBC certified, which is a gold standard for a green building. And uh, there are many ways uh, to do that. And also, you know, developers can take uh, a leaf out of the developers who are building commercial buildings. And big uh, responsible uh, building owners like Infosys, Wipro, HCL. Now, there is a beautiful building called the Infosys Software Development Block in Bangalore which is totally LEED Platinum certified and incorporates advanced energy management systems, solar power generation, efficient HVAC systems. So, you know, there are enough examples in India that are being created and developers have to be more pro proactive in ensuring that they do the same for their buildings that they're developing. Right. Um, so we are just saying that, look, you know, what can be done um, for projects that are underway for upcoming projects, Sundar? Um, what are your thoughts? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, for the projects that are underway uh, from the architects and the developers, they need to be more involved in the process of how to kind of incorporate net zero as a transition. Uh, this is not just from their uh, what they are doing for the climate change, but we are seeing also there is also increasing trend in consumers preferring to have net zero based projects. So like our panelists were saying, the demand for commercial projects is much higher when it is more LEED certified or a, a energy efficient building, the rents mm -hmm. go higher. So for a developer, that needs to come while they are planning their new construction projects. Uh, mm -hmm. From a government level also, we are seeing like uh, countries that are planning to kind of bring in carbon tax uh, as well as incentivization for developers who are kind of planning more energy efficient solutions versus the developers who have mm -hmm. like very uh, energy intensive uh, modules within their buildings. So we are seeing this trend uh, to kind of bring climate action uh, relevance for the real estate sector. And uh, this has to be done from a developer's uh, perspective as well as from a government's perspective. Right. So policy initiatives, of course, developers taking the right steps and consumers being aware. These really are uh, the measures and uh, the areas we need to watch out for going forward. Thank you so much, both of you, for sharing your thoughts and your insights. And like you both mentioned, there are many examples within India to learn from uh, and to take this forward. Thank you. Thank you.